So again, welcome to everybody here. Um, thanks for joining our webinar today. So the, the topic is uh, the introduction of our new product generation scale, scale STM. Okay, so this slide shows the, the agenda for today. So the first 45 minutes, we will we will show uh, slides um, on the introduction um, of the new product generation, just to give you an overview of the framework and the different modules. Um, and uh, before before we go to the projects, uh, I will show a few slides on the company scale, just to get an, for you to get an impression about uh, what we are doing and who we are. Uh, after the uh, this introduction, we probably will have a short break, five minutes maybe, and then we have two two parts with um, with live demonstration of the new applications with uh, with some examples, and uh, the first part is on the administration and the version management of the simulation models with with local so today we call it scale model. And, uh, and the second part is on the evaluation of simulation tests and, and results uh, and on reporting and requirement ana analysis with uh, scale result and scale project. So hopefully if you are in time, uh, we will have at the end a uh, few minutes, maybe five or 10 minutes for discussion and questions. Okay, first I'd like to uh, introduce the speakers for today. Uh, top left, that's me. Um, my name is Heiner Müller schön and I'm, I'm managing director of Scale. And I will start with the first slides on the company and uh, uh, and on the an overview of the products. And then I'm going to hand over for more details on the applications to my colleagues. To first to Marco Thiele, he's um, he's responsible for Scale model Loco. Uh, he will he will give you more details on that. And Martin Liebscher is uh, in charge of scale uh, result, Kevit, and uh, Gordon Geisler will show you the application scale project. Okay, let's start with a few slides of, uh, of our company. I did it very briefly. Um, scale is a company in Germany. We are located in Germany and um, the company is, is dedicated uh, almost 100% to CAE process and data management. And uh, Scale is a subsidiary of the Dynamo Holding Group. Uh, we established Scale in 2014 as a spin-off uh, from Dynamo. But uh, in, within Dynamo, uh, we, we are in the business of simulation data management and process management uh, many years before. So actually we started within Dynamo in 2005 or 2006, something like that, with this business. And uh, we developed um, software solutions together with uh, German automotive industry, especially with Audi. Um, and um, in 2014, we, we founded a dedicated company on this, the company Scale. And people from Dynamo and that time moved to this company. Um, and today we are about 45 to 50 to 50 people within Scale. And um, yeah, but we, we st of course, we still have a close cooperation with the, with the Dynamo uh, FAM with the um, yeah with all the affiliates of Dynamo. Stuff at scale is a really good mixture of experienced uh, CA engineers and uh, and of uh, professional computer scientists today. Yeah, we have four different locations in Germany. Um, in Dresden, we do all the software development. So Dresden mainly computer scientists are located. And in the um, in the location Stuttgart Ingolstadt Braunschweig, we are very close to our most important customers. And on this side, uh, yeah, consultants uh, doing or acting as a sort of interface between customer and developer, doing doing uh, on-site support and customization and conceptual design and, and things like that. Okay, international, we have several partners world worldwide. Um, first, uh, all the Dynamo affiliates in uh, in US, um, in Ohio, and in all Europe, France, Italy, Swiss, and Scandinavia. Um, and we have partners in in Asia, India, Europe, and uh, China, Pan I, um, and uh, Japan, Chase Hall, and very recently, 
uh, Costec in, in Korea. We work with those partners since yeah many years together with with Dynamo in the in the uh, Dynamo business. So and today they they also support our uh, products of uh, products of scale for simulation for simulation data management in in their countries. So this slide is about our uh, about our activity fields at uh, at scale about our portfolio. The first and most important are the products. The uh, STM framework, scale STM, with the different uh, applications, scale projects, scale models, scale result. We will we will show you later more more on that, what uh, more more details on on, the, on these applications. And the second uh, field is uh, services. So we do, of course, services for our products, uh, site support, customizing, things like that. But we also do individual software projects on customer order. Uh, instance requirement analysis and uh, con conceptual design for the for customer writing down specifications but we also do then the implementation and the project management so what we love to do are it projects uh, who are related to simulation methods and processes the third part is consulting advisory consulting and so we do that for in general for CAE uh, processes we gained quite a lot of experience in the past 10 15 years so so we can give advisory here for CAE processes if a company likes to introduce a simulation data management system system we can also help and uh, we also do software design for for customers um, and in the Past years, we had more and more activities uh, in in uh, topics, uh, subjects of machine learning or artificial intelligence methods within CAE, and we do also uh, advisory here in this in this field. Yeah. Just as an example, we had uh, several uh, research projects on on artificial intelligence in the past years, and uh, those two are uh, active today, funded projects from the German government. Uh, there is one one project on uh, forecast of process parameters in automotive body manufacturing, and uh, and the other the other project is on the um, you know on intelligent system to support simulations engineers on complex decisions for product design. Uh, so I don't want to go into the details of those projects, but if someone is interested, um, there is more information on our web page um, or. You, of course, uh, you can contact us directly if you are interested in that. OK, that's already all about the company. Um, and I'm going to continue now with the uh, software products, an overview of the software products. First, the first slide is actually not uh, especially for our software products, but it's a, it's a for introduction. It's a general slide on the on the benefits of uh, of an SDM system. Um, uh, there is the the first point is and, and probably the most important point is that uh, that you gain uh, standardization of data and processes with a with an SDM system, um, and you going to have a documentation of all activities uh, within your organization in simulation. Usually you have quality improvement, for instance, with automated model checks, but um, also already with the with all the standardiz standardization, uh, you will probably gain uh, quality improvement and less uh, errors. Yeah. Collaboration is a very important topic. Uh, support of teamwork uh, within your organization, but also maybe with external partners or with suppliers of your uh, organization. And it's not also not only for data sharing, but also for for process sharing. Time savings, uh, you, you, yeah, it's of course important. You you can gain time savings by uh, the automation of processes and workflows within such a such a system. And transparency is um, means that um, that that you can yeah that 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 is very transparent what what everybody is doing yeah and uh, so easy interaction of engineers is possible and if someone is not available uh, one day so uh, another engineer can easily take over because workflow and processes are similar uh, and transparent. Um, and last but not least, uh, reporting and assessment can be standardized and automated. 
So this makes it possible in that that you, within your organization you can you can compare the, the reports and the assessment if everything is standardized and automated. Yeah. So that's from our point of view at least the most important benefits uh, for for a business name system and it's just for for motivation for you to for introducing such a system. Okay. So this slide gives you an overview of our application. So the, the, there is a framework, we call the whole framework, we call, call it the scale SDM. And it contains on three, uh, three modules or applications. Scale project is the first application and it's sort of bracket on the whole, on the whole uh, design process. So within status E, status E or scale project today, um, you define the project, you set up the whole project with all the responsibilities, the milestones and uh, timetables and so on. And most important was the requirements for the for your product development. And then you move on to, to the simulation and in the simulation part, this is uh, this is part of, oh, this is a uh, part of scale model. You do the the handling of all the simulations, the management of the of the of all the variants and the load cases and so on. And you uh, and from here you usually you send your simulations to the yeah to any uh, uh, HPC uh, cluster, to, to or to any uh, resources to any running resources. Yeah. And once the results are available, you do the uh, assessment and the evaluation uh, with the module Kevin scale result. And, uh, and at the end, uh, you can send from, or you, you can transfer, you, know, you don't have to transfer, but they are the, the, the key results and the key, key performance indicators are available in status E at the end, again, in scale project. And there you can compare um, your results with your predefined requirements and then you can see if you have reached your targets or how many uh, requirements are still violated and how many are okay. Okay, so now we going deeper in the, in the next slides into the different uh, into the different applications. We're going to start with um, with scale project and on this uh, my colleague Gordon Geisler will take over and uh, give you more details on scale project. Okay, thank you, Heiner. Um, also welcome <coughs> from me. Um, let me introduce um, scale project uh, on some slides. Um, in that software module, the projects are initially created and um, all the project informations are managed there. And these project informations are centrally available for all the project participants. Um, these project information are provided additionally for the software module scale model and scale result. And thus enables a um, consistent and traceable data management in the development process with our tools. Um, let me introduce some essential features um, of the software on, on some screenshots and slides here. On the first slide, um, you can see um, the, a list on the, on the um, upper right uh, corner. You can see a list of, the, of all available projects um, where you can, can access the, the, the process, uh, the, the, the project. And some more detailed informations are presented on a project profile screen. And these information are, for instance, the, some central project documents and the project timeline and uh, relevant milestones for that project. Next slide, please, Heine. Um, in scale project, the project members are authorized according to their role in the project. A detailed role, role and authorization model is available in the system for this. Role assignment and authorization is always transparent and clearly displayed here. Next slide. 
Um, one key feature or the essential aspect of scale project is the administration and configuration of project requirements. These requirements are provided in a central master data management system and can be used for project specific requirement configuration by the project leaders. Read and write permissions for the requirements in the master data management MDM and in the project context are regulated by the role and authorization system. The, uh, by the assignment of test result IDs and context attributes to the requirements, uh, that, that enables an automated assignment of, of test results. Applications for this are shown later in the presentation from Martin uh, for the software module scale result. And by entering or automatically assign test results to the requirements, the project status can be recorded and documented throughout the entire course of the project. Scale project enables transparent monitoring of the project status at any point in the development process. Analysis of the degree of project maturity and support of approval decisions are possible with this software system. Flexible filtering and grouping options enable different views on the requirements, independence on the issue of the, to the project requirements and a flexible view on the project status. Um, that's from my side on, on these slides and I will show the, the system again in, in a live demo later. Now we proceed with, with LOCO, uh, alias scale model and uh, Marco Thiele will introduce that part. Okay, thank you very much, Gordon. Um, next slide, Heine. Um, the scale model is what is formerly been uh, the local and uh, mainly it's also um, the desktop client of our um, scale SDM solution and it means it's, it's a workbench from where you can work and interact with all um, our scale SDM system so also with the project and with the um, scale result uh, modules and uh, as a workbench, um, it's a place where you can actually interact with your all your data. You can manage your data, you can uh, store it there, you can provide it there for, for your colleagues, for other people um, that are working with the data. And um, you can actually integrate uh, with, with your tools, but I will come to that a little bit more in detail later and you can have all the version control there uh, you can collaborate with your colleagues you can manage all the variants and you can provide C methods through this um, scale model to all your um, team okay and the next slide um, I will go a little bit deeper on the different aspects um, by integration we mean that we uh, set up the scale model in such a way that it's easy to integrate arbitrary disciplines arbitrary solvers and um, you can work with any kind of data it's not dependent on solver format or um, maybe even uh, binary formats as ANSA DBs or hypermesh files and so on. You can manage uh, any kind of that data and um, you can set up processes such that your uh, simulation disciplines are um, automated. And integration also means um, to integrate with the different CAE tools and for example, Hypermesh, Ansa, Animator, Generator, Primer, Meter are among uh, all the tools that uh, our customers need. And we have a very powerful scripting and uh, interface and API um, where we can interact with um, these tools. And that's also one of the reasons why we um, still provide a desktop client and not only a web client where you can work with because uh, from the desktop client we can directly interact with um, the applications we'll see that later on the online demo uh, that means that you can just click on the data open it directly from there uh, in uh, your preferred preprocessor like Anza, Hypermesh, Primer, whatsoever, and uh, work from there. And once you save your data and close it, it will be automatically checked in the system. There's no more user interaction 
necessary and the data will be transferred automatically to all your colleagues so that they can see what you have been doing and um, if you publish your work uh, they can keep on working with your new versions and um, by this uh, it means it's a great enhancement to productivity because you do not have to interact with the files uh, anymore as you are probably used to. Um, another uh, aspect of integration means that also from the scale model, you can um, submit your jobs directly to an HPC system, which can be on site your HPC system or can be a cloud resource where you do the, your calculations. And uh, we incorporated it in such a way that all the data is getting transferred automatically to the HPC system and that even on the HPC system, you can establish monitoring of your jobs so that you can see within the scan model um, how your job is going, where it is, how long it will take still, uh, if it's still queued and things like that. But we'll show that later also in the online demo. And but this is also a very integral part um, to to be able to um, actually send the jobs. Can you go to the next slide, Hannah? Um, one of the key aspects uh, in Scale SCM is um, to have every data that you check in or that you work with versioned. Um, this means that um, once you start working on a published, published version of uh, some piece of data, let's say um, some ls include file, uh, and you change something, a new version will be derived automatically and you have to uh, document what you're doing. You have to give a comment on what you're doing. You can uh, store images or PDF reports or whatsoever on your new, new versions of that file. And um, this is done consistently throughout the whole SCM system. That means it's not only done with, um, with the include files, which is easy and everybody does this, but it's also done with parameter tables, parameters themselves, folders, uh, and whatsoever data is in there, even with the whole project. And um, because we are doing it uh, in a very consequent way, the thing is that we need uh, tools for the user to navigate through um, all these versions. And that's the two, two screenshots that you see here. On the left side, you see um, a so-called rail graph, which is used mainly for uh, navigation in the SCM system and um, where you can um, select versions and instantly access all the data which is in that version, but you can also see by the rails which are on the left side, these lines uh, where they have been derived from. So you can see, for example, this version 100 was derived from version 99 and then following the line, you can see that it was uh, derived from version, I think, 81 and, and so on. That's um, for navigation. And on the right side, you see a screenshot um, of this big history graph, we call it. Uh, it's um, an instrument where you can navigate through many, many, many versions, because if you're in a productive environment, uh, let's say from some OEM, you'll not get like just 20 versions or 100 versions, but you will get like thousands or maybe even tens of thousands uh, of versions that you have to navigate. So um, this is more um, in depth, so you can zoom in, can zoom out. You have a kind of a mind map. You can um, show uh, more detailed data on the versions, and you can see from where certain disciplines derived their data, how it, they pro pro proceeded through time uh, with the data, what they did on the data, and when uh, the data got merged again. So, next slide, Heiner. Because um, what we have with these versions and all this data is every version that you check in will automatically synchronize to everybody who's working in the scale SCM desktop client. And that's another thing why we are still working with a desktop client and not only a web client, because if you are working in a setup where, for example, you have um, partners which are all over the world, you need um, or it's one, it's our approach um, that the data is getting synchronized, or at least part of the data is getting synchronized to their place so that they have uh, zero latency um, on network 
uh, issues. So um, if they request um, to know which versions exist or something like that, um, this will be processed locally and they will not have to have a turnaround with the server because if you have a latency of let's say uh, half a second and you have many server requests, uh, this will make the uh, performance of your application very slow. And we avoid that by uh, synchronizing data actually to the user so that he can work with his local data. He does not have to download things and things like that. And it's specifically built for these kind of setups where you can uh, actually interact with users from all over the world. Uh, and the next slide. And um, the key point of all this uh, is that in the end, you are enabled to parallelize your workloads uh, within CA business uh, so that you can actually have um, users working on one problem, other users working on another problem of the same product. Um, and then we have also tools uh, to help them to merge their data again, to revise what changed the one user what changed the other users and um, to give them the possibility um, to compare their work and say okay um, in a new version we want to merge these features these uh, solutions that we came up with or that Heiner, next slide and can you go to the next slide Heiner? Uh, I already moved to the next slide. Can can you see it? Okay, it's not getting updated here, but I, I just uh, I have it here on another screen. Okay, um, next slide. A and in order to do so, we actually have tools um, to help them to merge the data. As you can see, for example, here in the bigger history graph, we have one version which is all on the left, the one three eight nine, and which has content which has been merged to the other versions and uh, you, you can also see that in the mind map and that's the reason why we actually implemented such a mind map because when you start merging things um, it's getting kind of confusing sometimes and that's why we incorporate um, powerful tools to help the user to to work with um, all those different versions and keep track on what changes got into what versions okay Hannah, can you go to the next slide Another very important aspect is um, to deal with many, many variants. Uh, this can mean product variants when, when you have a product and you have different setups of the product. And, uh, but it can also mean different load cases where you have uh, just one product and you want to um, subject it to different kinds of loads and um, yeah, load cases. And um, we have a very unique system where we can kind of automatically uh, pull out from a huge pool of uh, parts and components, the right components uh, to use for a certain uh, product setup or a certain load case. And uh, this is done uh, yeah, semi-automatically by um, defining logic rules. Uh, I'll come to that later a little bit more in detail. And we can apply this kind of rules not only for um, the actual CE components, but also for parameters like the airbag time to fire, sheet thicknesses, calculation times, frictions, and so on, uh, which makes it very convenient, for example, to use one airbag throughout the whole project and just parameterize um, the parameters uh, that are changing from load case to load case. And the other aspect is once you have parameters in place, you can set up robustness studies, DOE studies for optimization or for, uh, let's say, pedestrian safety. You can um, parameterize it in a way that you can have many um, points that you're going to simulate at once. OK, Heine, I can go to the next slide. Uh, one reason why we are um, not uh, preferring a way where you actually have to manually um, assign each component, each include to one load case is that in productive environments we see um, that users uh, over time have many, many load cases. So we see cases where uh, they have about 300 different configurations or load cases uh, or even more. 
And on the other hand, they have um, many, if you want to collaborate, you have to separate your model and, and more components. And um, they tend to have uh, lots of um, co uh, individual components. And uh, in productive environment, we see on the other hand, like 500 components in one pool version. And um, if you try to assign all the components manually um, to the load cases, this can be very cumbersome and um, can do a lot of errors and that's the reason why um, we enable the user to also uh, do the assignment logic based by uh, defining rules which component has to be used for which load case with certain properties okay and i can go to next slide um, another very important aspect of um, scale scm is um, to aid in the process of democratization of uh, cie um, we're doing this by uh, giving the possibility that you can create libraries for example material library uh, which is maintained by CAE experts and provided from the cx c AE expert to all the other users. But you cannot do that just with materials. You can do that with anything like uh, barrier models or dummy models or airbag models, things which are very complicated uh, to set up. And um, so what you can do is you ha can have CE expert who do um, this uh, spe specific work and then they provide um, the ready models for the users, uh, which can then use it uh, to focus on their engineering task and uh, in scale model uh, you cannot do that not only with uh, fea data but you can also do it uh, with uh, scripts or applications and uh, post-processing processes um, which you see on the right side um, we have the possibility to de define um, many different kinds of scripts who act uh, through an API with the SDM system and can perform tasks for the users. Um, and because this requires programming, it's best to have some expert uh, who do that. And then it's provided as a process to the CAE users who do not have to care anymore about that and get an automatic post-processing, for example, or get automatic checks on their includes that tell them if there are still issues with uh, this FAA data. Okay, Heine, next slide. Um, the whole point of doing all this is, in the end, um, to, to keep the engineer away from all this uh, cumbersome tasks that he has to do now, like um, dealing with storage, dealing with roles and writes, with the HPC system, how to call a solver, uh, and, and things like that. And next slide, Heine. And to take, to take that away from the engineer, and uh, give him more room to do the engineering while the scale SCM is doing in the background um, all this uh, standard task to deal with the system. Okay, that's on my slides. I think mm -hmm. uh, you. now it's your turn, Martin. Okay, thank you, Marco. Um, we are at the assessment and uh, evaluation step of the process, and that's part of Kevin's scale results. So, next slide, please. <laughs> Um, Kevin is um, available as desktop and uh, as a um, web application and a screenshot of the web application is shown here. Um, the desktop and the web application have almost the same functionalities. So the desktop client allows us to integrate very well in your local and working environment to integrate with local tools, scripts and so on. And the web client, it runs everywhere without any installation. Uh, you only need an up-to-date browser. So it runs even an iPad. So we have both desktop client and web client, and you can choose whatever you want uh, depending on your needs. So Kevit integrates simulations and um, uh, that have been um, um, generated by local or which have been imported uh, from other source systems and also physical tests can be imported and uh, they are represented in the same way as simulations. So they can compare it uh, easily uh, simulation and tests. Yeah. Next slide, please. Um, Kevin provides access to all the post data which are um, attached to simulation and tests and um, we have an internal viewer for media data so images and movies can be previewed here and also curves 
Um, for curves, we provide a basic plotting functionality, um, which allows us to, to compare curves over many simulations or to compare curves from simulation and tests. And you can zoom and pan within the curves and so on. We have um, also in, in 3D preview for simulation results. So a complete car model is still too huge for the, the web browser, but um, uh, we are able to show parts of the model that is just possible. And for that feature, um, it does not replace uh, a post processor, but um, allows us to in fast preview uh, without um, downloading the whole model. So the model preview data have to be prepared in advance so during post processing. And um, with the viewer, you can just uh, rotate and zoom into the model and you are um, able to print results like um, displacements onto the model. I can just uh, demonstrate to you later that in the demo section. Um, with the desktop line, you can also integrate your favorite post processors and uh, scripts. And one example might be here in the lower corner, uh, left corner. Um, a script that generates an overlay test versus a simulation and um, Kevin, it makes it convenient for you to to execute that script that is providing all the data in the background. The scripts get executed and uh, the result is shown afterwards. So it's, uh, Kevin is just a workbench for, a workbench for the simulation and uh, test engineer. So next slide, please. So um, with Kevin, you are able to assess, uh, assess key result. Uh, key results, Gordon already mentioned it, and uh, the key results are assessed with respect to the project targets, which have been defined in Scale Project, which is shown here in the right lower corner. And these targets are applied on the, the key result values, and um, these get colored. Um, the color scheme is also defined in Scale Project. And with that pre-assessment, um, which is done automatically for you, um, you get a first impression uh, of the current situation and uh, you might get started looking closer to simulations uh, which do not fulfill the requirements. So at the moment we support in our new generation the, this pre-assessment uh, within the report uh, on the right side. And uh, in the grid, uh, we are still working on it. So we get it ready in the next two months, I think. And um, this part here in the middle is uh, just taken from the current productive version uh, where this feature is already available. The next slide, please. Um, reporting is one of the, the most frequently used functionalities and um, Kevit provides several approaches to, to generate reports and to find reports. Um, our newest approach is a web report, which can be uh, configured by the users and uh, it is um, evaluated on the fly. As you just click on the left side here, um, simulation tests, it get executed and um, these um, report shows up. Um, the report is um, defined in HTML uh, at the moment, but we consider it to, to improve it and simplify it further. So you want to, to switch to Markdown or something like that, you, you know, from Wikipedia to define content and layout. Um, reports can also be um, exported to, to PowerPoint, Excel, or PDF. Um, all these approaches um, rely on templates. And for instance, uh, we support um, PowerPoint templates where you can easily um, define with keywords in a rectangle uh, a plotting area. And um, the um, template is um, applied on selected simulations and gets executed and, and um, the plot is just uh, created for you and the template is fulfilled with the, the data. So for most of the reports, we, we support key results, curves, images, and uh, for the web report, movies, and also 3D models. I can just show you that also later. And we have a special uh, support for animator that's on the next slide. So we have a dedicated support for animator and you can just use all the reporting capabilities of animator, fringe plots, cross sections, including of 3D models and so on. And um, you can just uh, uh, get it executed on the server side where all the data resides and uh, just download in PDF, PowerPoint or animator DB here. So the session file based and um, yeah, it's very convenient for the user here. Um, we have also dedicated support for um, text-based reports. Um, the source might be Word files and uh, they can contain up to 100 pages, uh, for instance, and uh, you define placeholders in these um, documents and uh, these placeholders get replaced during the execution and you get just a PDF of all these um, pages included and uh, images and uh, metadata key results are included uh, in, in the right place. 
So we have um, slide-based reports based on, on PowerPoint, already mentioned before, and also um, Animator is based to um, um, is able to create PowerPoint-based uh, PowerPoint reports. Um, the interactive reports are just uh, the web reports. I just showed you that on the slide before. So the last thing would be data analysis. Mm. On the next slide. Um, with data, you have all the, the data at one place. Um, Kevin is, uh, has a structured view on the data, and uh, that's a good starting point uh, if you want to have an analysis over many simulations or many tests. And um, an example might be if you want to know how a key result develops over time, or if you want to investigate in, in DOE or robustness study. So we are providing some uh, visualization features like two or 3D plots and uh, you are also able to integrate uh, an, an meter model and approximation just to re explore the model behavior that's shown here in the picture. And um, also correlation plots are possible in order to, to inspect um, the variable dependencies. And uh, we have also approaches for outlier identification. And uh, with our add-on approach, um, you are able to integrate your own algorithms. So you are able to, to extend Kevit with functionalities. So that was the last slide to Kevin. And there's a closing slide that is um, true for all of our modules in Scale SDM. Um, our models are our modules are scalable, so they scale with the number of users and of the increasing data. Um, we have a cloud-based approach, so you can run it uh, from everywhere, and um, our resources are scaling up depending on your demand. And um, yeah, customization of the modules is also one of our strengths. So you have various options to, to customize in pre and post area, and you have also um, various options to integrate in your workspace. Yeah. Data provisioning is also uh, one of the top features. So we have fast, easy, fast and easy access to the data. So we spend a lot of effort in the last years to, to provide data compression algorithms for storage and uh, transfer. So. That's the closing slide for, for our product, and um, let me thank for your attention so far. Okay, um, so what you see here now on my Linux desktop is a native application that is uh, working here on, on, on this Linux workstation I'm working with. Um, this um, scale SDM desktop client is also available for um, other operating systems, uh, mainly uh, Windows and uh, other Linux distributions. I'm using here an uh, Ubuntu Linux. Uh, it's also for Red Hat or CentOS or other distributions. Uh, we can provide this client. Um, the first big changes uh, now in the desktop client uh, compared to the actual productive um, local client, you can incorporate um, all of our products like scale product project, which uh, was introduced by Gordon, where you can manage all your uh, projects, set it up, uh, manage the requirements. Um, the scale model where you work with your CE data are where you import your CAD data, do the meshing, um, set up the whole model and things like that. And then once your simulations are done, scale results, uh, which will be shown by, by Martin um, a little later, where you can access all your results, can work, interact with the curves or key results and so on. But Martin will go on that. That's um, a big change with the scale desktop client. Uh, again, uh, scale desktop client is for the people who are working um, directly with the data and need fast access to the data. Um, all the modules are also available um, as web clients. Um, the work is almost done for scale result and scale project, but scale model will also be available as a web client um, at some point. Okay. Um, Another aspect is, um, if you see here the tabs, this works like uh, in a web browser like you're used to. And um, if you uh, want to work um, <clears throat> on a different uh, set of data or with different data uh, or with, you can just go here and, and, and open 
other tabs with the different modules. Like you can open another model tab or another project tab where you um, can interact uh, differently. For example, I have here our demo model, uh, which is the Toyota Yaris. And um, I also have here um, another project, which, which is this uh, Lego project of mine, uh, which I'm sometimes using for development purposes. Okay, and um, I have this um, two projects uh, here and I can easily um, switch between that. And this is very convenient uh, compared to Loco2 because it helps you a lot if you want to copy data from one project to another. You can just go here to copy and paste and paste it uh, at the other side. And uh, this is very new. Okay, um, just make it a little bit bigger here. Now I, I want to just introduce a little bit in how you are using um, this um, scale model. And um, one of the first thing is uh, when you want to choose the project that you're working with, um, you can go here, it's a navigational bar, and you can choose uh, between project which you have already downloaded, which are the projects up here. But you can also choose to um, synchronize new projects or other projects uh, from a list of projects which are available on the server. Uh, once you click on one of the projects, they, they, they are getting downloaded to your um, workstations. Not all of it, but the uh, scale SDM decides kind of um, by what you are using, uh, what data you really might need and will download only that data. And um, this is also uh, is done, for example, by um, choosing a certain version you want to start with. For example, I have here a version which is uh, the version 1483. So we can see here in the na navigation um, uh, the rail graph, which I um, explained earlier, which is one of the uh, main uh, elements uh, in scale SDM model uh, to navigate through uh, the pro pro project's uh, different uh, versions in, in time. So I can see I have here a version 1483. And um, <clears throat> once I'm selecting a different version, like the 1486, so once I click on that, all the data that belongs to that version is loaded in the rest of the um, scale desktop client. So, and that's how easy it is actually in scale STM to, to switch between different project versions. It's immediately there. You do not have to wait for it. And this is a, uh, rail graph. As I explained earlier, I can see here by following the rail that from this version 1483, there is another version was derived, which is the version 1486, just by following the lines. And this always gives me a context uh, where uh, the data came from, who's been working on it earlier, and what has been doing. As you can see also here, I provided some, some imagery um, to just to illustrate what I was doing, for example, this is uh, just my proper prepared version for the demo. And uh, here a colleague uh, prepared some uh, robustness study uh, from within our system. OK, um, next in the navigation uh, nil panel, uh, what's also very important is uh, the data structure. It's just like a folder structure. And um, if I click here on the folder, it's like in a file system. Um, I will get here on the in the middle part um, the components uh, we call it loaded, which belong to to that um, folder. For example, here doors and lids. I will get a folder where um, there is an LS Diner keyword file for the rear door. So, and if I load it. Uh, or if I click on it, I'll get here on the right side all the metadata which belongs to um, to to that uh, to that door from from within the system. Um, now, also the door itself has an history. So if I click on the door, I can choose to display also here on the right side the version history of the door. This is just versions of the same uh, LS Dyna keyword file of the door. And um, I will illustrate what uh, will happen um, 
if, for example, I have uh, another version of my project where I changed the door, uh, I can see it immediately when I uh, click on here that um, this version uses a different door. And this kind of navigation where all the selections are kept is very efficient. If you have to switch between different um, versions of your project, because just by um, switching the version of the project, I can immediately see what version of the door is being used in, in, in that version um, of my project. And yeah, and another aspect um, which I wanted to show is um, how interacting with um, the solver files of with the files which we have here is is going on. For example, if I'm going here to the door, I'm um, saying I want to edit it, and then I can choose between different preprocessors. And for example, if I choose a very simple preprocessor which is just a text editor, um, the file is opened right away, so I do not have to wait for downloading or for for something else. And if I again go then there and say um, I'm I'm just changing something in the file and I'm saving it, um, it will be um, checked in back into the project. The project will uh, request me uh, to write something, what I did here. And um, then I can apply the change to the SCM system and then it's already checked in and will be synchronized to, to everybody else uh, of my team. So uh, another user that comes and looks into that version will see that there is a change to the door uh, in version 85. Okay, um, I will show this a little bit more um, advanced, um, how to deal um, with files by looking into the body in white. Um, when I look uh, into the body in white, I did something different here. Um, I um, mainly um, started working with an ANSA database file and belonging to that ANSA database file are many different other files here. There are CAT files which are used for the meshing. Um, there are um, keyword files for different use cases. For example, um, there is a keyword file for a normal roof case and a sunroof case. And all these keyword files are connected um, to this um, ANSA database. By um, this is done within here uh, in the Scala SCM system by by the configuration. So um, if I, for example, choose here the normal roof case, uh, the load case, which is below here, I haven't explained the load cases yet. Uh, down here are the load cases. And I can group the load cases, for example, by discipline. I have some crash load cases, some pedestrian safety, some NVH, some fatigue load cases. If I go here into crash load cases, I can see I have for different uh, barrier types or site impact or whatsoever. And for different velocity, I have load cases. And if I select one load case, I can see this load case is taking out the normal roof. Um, keyword file, which belongs to this under file. And I want to show how this works. Um, now I'm going here to the under file and I say, I want to edit this under file using ANSA. Uh, then uh, the file is uh, just passed on to ANSA. Again, this is already a bigger file, which I hadn't have to download. I can just open it right away and it's, it's there and I can work with it. So, and then within ANSA, I, ca I can apply some changes, yeah? and uh, then can, I can save it back. However, um, this ANSA file contains a different configuration, meaning it contains one configuration for the normal roof, and um, the normal roof um, is just a closed roof, and it, then it contains a configuration for uh, a sunroof. I just cut a hole in here to, to, for this demonstration of purpose. And now I can decide as an engineer to um, realize this um, configurations and then the keyword file will be saved back uh, into local uh, into the scale SCM and um, then I can use it for different load cases uh, while having one other database file which is convenient 
um, if you uh, having changes which affect both load cases. And this is just one example how one can deal um, with this kind of issue. And let me just save the file here right now. Okay, again, he will ask me what I did. I did some changes on the Anther database, and now it's back into the system and um, I can start my simulations. Um, another way uh, what you can do or the next step is to just keep the answer file and keep here a placeholder file which is uh, empty and um, work with that placeholder file. It's just empty and then in the process when I start the simulation by say okay let's send it to the HPC system um, answer will be started in the background and according to the solver or to uh, the discipline or load case it will realize this keyword file for me. So I do not have to care about that myself. This requires um, some standardization that you have uh, to do uh, with your CE methods, but it actually uh, works in us some, some clients using it in, in this way. Okay, um, one aspect um, I haven't uh, talked about is how to find versions. And um, this is actually pretty easy. If I go here, I have um, my version list and I can just filter it. So I can say, okay, so show me everything uh, where I did demos. Okay, so it's uh, actually my demo pool, so there are many versions, um, but I can um, also say, okay, show me some, so many of the versions where I did something with ANSA. And I get the versions and uh, can refine my, my search here uh, in that version. And you can also see, uh, this is a very quick search um, on the data that I have locally available. Yeah. Um, you can also always um, go go here and if um, you have many, many components here, you can just uh, filter it and say, okay, uh, show me show me the sunroof and um, it shows you the body white sunroof or filter uh, everything uh, related uh, to the um, to the discipline crash, for example. Yeah, you can just um, filter it and uh, it will be already available here. Okay, um, one more thing to show is once I start a simulation here, um, I say assembly remotely means um, I'll not assemble it locally to my disk, which I can also do, assembly locally. So I will write it out to the disk, the model, and I can then start LS Dyna or whatsoever solver on my uh, on my workstation. Uh, I can also say uh, assemble it remotely, and um, this means it will be sent to the HPC system. And once it's sent to the HPC system, um, I have down, down here um, a list of all my jobs running on the HPC system, for example, uh, here you can see I have a job which is already uh, running and it has already cal calculated 66 of out of 140 milliseconds. And I can go a little bit deeper in here and say, see, okay, the assembly uh, has been done. It's fine. It's in the solving. Next thing will be uh, post-processing. And what is also new now with the scale STM desktop client that we can have here links to the job folders. So I can say, okay, um, go to the HPC system and um, he's using now SSH is locking on to the HPC system and I can just go to the folder and uh, just uh, see how my simulation is going on here. Look into the D3 HSP file of Alastina, for example, into the log files and uh, see what's going on, uh, on uh, with my simulation. I can uh, just interact it. And uh, from here, I also can choose to to stop certain simulation. I can also search for uh, simulations, for example, uh, only for the EU market and can stop them uh, altogether. Uh, it's, um, we we investigated uh, we in invested a little bit more in uh, the uh, job monitoring part here. So and if I start a simulation, you can see it's just hitting uh, start simulation and the simulation is automatically sent to the cluster and and that's it. It's, it's very easy to start 
even many simulations. So if I have a change and I want to start all 556 uh, load uh, kilometer per hour load cases of the front impact ODB barrier, I can just hit the whole folder and um, it will start all four simulations now um, on the HPC system. And once the simulations are done, you can uh, start investigating the result, which you can see here uh, in the module scale result. But this is the part um, Martin will show the live demo. And Marco showed us the model section here. So where we prepare simulation and submit them to cluster. And I'm now going to the result tab where all the post processing and post data are displayed. Um, as we are now on the desktop client, um, there, there's this special feature from the desktop client that you can interact with your system. So there, there's an open with, yeah? that's uh, the only pro or the plus of the desktop client and you can just uh, open data with your local associated programs, in that case the photo application and Kevit or the, the Scale SDM client just providing the data in the background, opens that application and delete everything afterwards. So this open with is the only pro of the, the desktop version and the same is available as web client it looks almost the same here if I just also selecting photos yeah and um, but in that desktop uh, web client um, there's no open with yeah that's the only difference I'm, I'm going to continue with the web client now but um, it is um, they share the same functionality except with the open with function um, I opened the Yaris project also here and you see here on the left side a filter section where you can filter down your simulations that are shown here in that grid. So I'm able to, uh, to hide anything from Europe or anything from front and, and so on. And I can define this filter cascade here and, and a thing called a preset. So I can adapt that um, layout and the information here to my need, to my discipline. And I can, in that case it's Crash here, but can any other discipline like NVH or so. Um, that can be configured by the end user or you can provide that preset to your team and so on and you, you are able to customize a little bit here. Um, when I've just opened that project and I fill it down, so the resulting data are shown here in that grid. Yeah, that's are several hundred simulations normally. And all these columns here are also predefined in, in the preset. Um, and yeah, the interface, I can just um, yeah, hide and unhide some columns and, and kind of rearrange them if I want. Yeah. So we have basically all the actions you can do in Excel. So you can just filter overall. So we have the Rustin study. I will show that later, but you can just um, filter over all columns and you can shrink it down to the uh, robustness study results or you can just look for a username or you can shrink down to a specific date, a specific date or or whatever meta information here are shown in that in that grid. Yeah. Um, you have also the ability to structure your data further so you can select a column here. I take the directive and I can just drag it to the top and these data are grouped by that information. So you can structure your data a little bit. You can just form a tree, a tree. so you can select a, a second column. And so everything gets structured by directive, yeah, impact, front impact here, or maybe in, in Euro and cap we have side impact, front impact, and so on. And you can just add multiple columns here and you can get multiple levels here if you want to. Yeah, in our case, it's, it's enough and um, I'm going to select a an, an, an simulation here. So every line is a simulation or it can even be a test for the Yaris model. We have an, um, uh, also test data yeah, that is that are free. And if I'm going to select it, um, uh, everything is shown here that is available as post data. So photos, for instance, and I can have a quick preview on, on photos that are uh, images that are generated during the post processing or from the testing results. I'm, can slide through here and uh, have a first yeah, impression uh, on the data. Now uh, that's also possible for videos, so they have to be generated in, in post processing for simulations, and then I can have just a preview here in the browser. And for simulations, that's also true, and I can just uh, yeah play simulations here, the simulation, uh, the the testing videos here. Um, there are also documents I can access. So documents could be anything uh, else yeah, that is not photo or video. And in our case, um, for testing, it could be in yeah, 
testing protocol or something like that, a PDF file, or for simulations uh, that are at the output files that can be opened with your local um, post processors in the desktop version. In the web version, you have to download it. Yeah. Or if you use the preview uh, models, so I prepared you one, um, just a part of the simulation, I can use the internal uh, model preview. So the um, part that I have extracted are shown here, and I can just fringe um, the velocity, uh, for instance, here. At the moment, there's only one state here shown, and uh, we will add multiple states, so we'll playback later, and uh, maybe with, um, yeah, more implementation, we are also able to, to get uh, larger models. So it's still uh, possible to include a, a complete model, yeah, but it's a little bit uh, too RAM consuming and not uh, fast um, in, in the browser. But it's the beginning, I think, and still useful. So I have a quick overview about without any uh, downloading any files here, and I can just have it in the browser. Yeah. So we have also access uh, to the channels uh, from um, the selected simulations here, and I'm going to filter it down to the, the engine channels. And uh, I've grouped that here, this after the channel code, and I'm having the channels from the simulation and also from the test here. It's from the engine, it's um, yeah some acceleration here, and I can just manually open it and plot it here, and I have an, yeah, just a preview. I can just zoom in and pick some. Uh, yeah, points here, and um, I can just have multiple um, um, channels here plotted, and then I can just uh, select even more simulations and tests. So it's simple here at the moment, but it's in preview. Also, measure data are um, supported, but unfortunately for the testing result here for the, the RS, we don't have it. But uh, if you have measure data, yeah, they get listed here, and you can have a preview even in 3D, like for the the, the model preview. Yeah. Um, a new feature is the reporting. I can just drag it here to the right side. So you can arrange the desktop as you, as you want. Um, I put it on the right side here. I can even uh, make it full screen yeah, for large reports. It might be might be useful, but for now it should be enough um, from the right side here. I've selected a simulation and, and the corresponding um, test. And um, I defined here the report in HTML. Yeah, and I define to have uh, the simulation video and the testing video here side by side, and I'm able to play it simultaneously. I can just zoom in if I want to, and I can go back and um, yeah, have multiple videos here included. I can also predefine um, predefined plots. I did it manu manually here in the, in the channel tab, but I can define my template here for the, the report that I just want to have that uh, type of channel code here. And for every selected simulation and test, they, these uh, channels are included. And I can just um, add one more if I want, and it's get instantly updated. So I have three channels now from the three simulations and tests I, I selected. So I can have it multiple times here. And also there is the ability to include the, the key results here. I have three. Um, yeah, or two simulations and one test here, and I have three key results for an engine top acceleration here in that, in that um, uh, column here, and um, they get rated by the um, requirements I defined, or Gordon defined in the scale project um, module. So and then they get uh, automatically uh, pre-assessed here, and I have just information how I'm just uh, regarding to my project targets. Yeah. And I can do that for multiple key results here, and I can add tables later here, and I can arrange it how I, I want to arrange it. I can just um, change the ATM, HTML source code. Yeah. So uh, some plots continue, and here also some more key results. I can do that with photos, um, as I did it with the, the videos and, and so on. And I'm also able to do that with the, the uh, 3D model. So I'm just trying to load it once again. I prepared this for, I'm not sure it is not, not showing up here. That happens last time also, but yeah, okay. Unfortunately, the model is not showing up here, yeah. But maybe you imagine, you sh I showed you the model in, in the uh, extra view and that, that's appearing here also. Maybe once again, maybe I just uh, selected the wrong, no, okay. Uh, unfortunately, maybe it's a bug here. Or I did a mistake selecting the wrong simulation. So these three models showing up here, you can rotate and zoom it like it, I, I did it before in the, the external viewer here. So there's some more um, channels 
um, plotted here. And that uh, report was for crash, but I can just show you it for another discipline. You, you're able to define it um, in your own way for your own needs. Uh, I'm going to a new tab here. I'm opening um, an uh, other uh, preset. Um, we have the Yaris demo preset here, and I'm changing to NBH. Yeah, NBH discipline. We had crash here before, and I'm opening the same project here. I did pre-filter only NVH results, so I have a list of simulations that we have prepared with NVH. And I'm can selecting one simulation here. I have still or also have videos here, so they are not showing crash, they are showing eigen modes here. And I can just explore the data also here. I did it in the same way I did it for the crash. And now I have a different report here on the right side. So for NVH, I decided to have a different report, of course. So you have the eigen modes here. And I can just add some uh, simulation in there just to get updated here. And for some simulation, we prepared uh, data so that you are able to have a, um, an analysis and frequency domain here and you get a different type of plot that is suitable for NVH. So we have the frequency domain here and we have the amplitude high here and we can just uh, do analyze it for some, some channels. That is um, a typical use case in NVH and we adopted the report here. So you are able to change it in, in the way you want to and you can also add videos here, build uh, um, photos as you want to and also channels uh, as you have seen it in the crash area. So um, in that case, we, we selected here the, the discipline um, um, tag and we if it is uh, NVH, we're showing that report. If it is crash, we show the other one. Uh, you're also able to select and manually and report you, you have prepared in, in HTML. Yeah. OK, I'm going back to the crash. Um, I've shown you the project, the filtering, accessing photos and so on, the report. And we did a robustness study. Marco mentioned it before. I'm just looking for a max. I can just also go ahead and just label, uh, sort by label. And I'm just getting that uh, level here and I have 58 simulations that were included in the robustness study. And I'm going to the, the end of the table. There are some results. So we have changed the barrier offset, the vehicle speed, and the firewall intrusion we, we uh, had inspected, and also the OSC value. And I'm going to select all of these values here. Should be 58, I think. And um, I'm sending it to the data analysis here. It shows up uh, with the same data here once again. I have to classify it that uh, the firewall intrusion is an output and the OSC also. And now we can have a, just an, an, a plot here. And that is a correlation plot. And I see that uh, the vehicle speed correlates a little bit with the OSC, also the firewall intrusion, but the barrier offset and the OSC not. And also that is just true for, uh, for the firewall intrusion. So I have a first impression on the data. And now I'm able to, to investigate further. I can just add a 3D plot. There is scatter plot 3D, um, barrier offset, vehicle speed, firewall intrusion or OLC, OLC. And now the plot gets added. Uh, we see here um, polynomial regression. I prepared also a an, an nonlinear meter model for that. I'm just changing it here. Um, and now we just had a look on the plot once again. And it's, it takes a little bit of time to execute uh, the meter model to show it up. And it is more nonlinear and uh, yeah, it um, shows the behavior of the model here a little bit in that area. So we have the vehicle speed, the barrier offset and the OSC. And uh, we see here a plateau and we see also uh, our data I've selected before. And now we notice that for a low speed, and for barrier offset of 10, so there's an extrema here. That's also true for that area here. And there's also one here. So I can just go ahead and explore the model and um, yeah, try to find suitable parameter sets, for instance. And I can also pay, go back to the data section and try to find outliers in that data here. So two outliers are found. I'm going to back to the plots. So 
these points are identified as outliers. For that um, yeah, number of dimensions, it's possible to do it on my own with my eyes, so it's not a problem, but um, yeah, consider more dimensions and, and more points. It helps me to identify outliers here. And I can get, just go to this 3D section and plot it once again, and I just see that these outliers are causing that extrema here and it, it might be wise to to check the simulation once again or to, to investigate what's have been maybe different in the in the tests just to yeah to make sure that this is a uh, real extrema here and that not uh, relies on errors or something like that so yeah there's some other options here but uh, that's the first impression maybe for the data analysis uh, plugin and uh, we're going to to enhance this but um, that's um, the, the starting point for uh, data analysis in the new generation so um, i'm going to reset all filters and one thing is um, going to take this back here also let me change to two simulations um, and now I'm able to to show you the reporting functionalities that are relies on animator here we have added an animator report here um, we want to compare or even we can just take uh, take uh, also the the testing with so we have our testing here we have two simulations and we want to compare each other we can just run the animator report here I can press provide some colors but let me skip it here so I want to have the PDF part output only at the moment. And now on the uh, server side, we have all the data already. So there's nothing to be copied around. And uh, the animator is running the batch mode on the server side and is uh, generating the report I defined before in the session file. And it gets executed and the PDF is created and should be, yeah, down, get downloaded. Yeah, it's ready at the moment. PDF gets downloaded and you have an inline display of the result so that is the report um, it's a comparison between these two similar three uh, two simulations and, and the one test and that's an overview page and you can just include everything an animator is capable of so these are curves yeah other curves tables curves once again and you can just visualize your osc values and, and the area you can include models fringe plots and everything animator can do yeah there are some enhanced plots here how you stay with your um, how you are with your results with respect to some limits that come from state c yeah from scale project and also diagrams and so on you have more advanced reports with animator than with the web report here so that's just an example here yeah. And you can also integrate Meta or Hypergraph or anything that is um, that you can script or run in batch mode, so on server side. Yeah. Uh, animator is just an example, but we have a very good integration with Animator. So we did a lot of reports with that program already. Um, I also showed you or told you about the, the uh, text reports. So it's typically used in, in testing, but also in simulations. So you have um, compliance reports or um, some for legal documents you have to fulfill after testing and these are word files hundreds of pages and you have to replace uh, placeholders so you have to insert some metadata uh, part numbers or yeah something like that and that's done in the background for you you just define the text you define a placeholder here at this position and it gets fulfilled by the by cabot at the uh, in the background also true for tables, you insert your results for dummy um, um, injury criteria. Also images are supported and you have generated hundreds of pages for you in seconds and you don't need to overtake the values by hand and you don't have hassle with uh, mistakes and errors and so on. And even tables are just typically out problems of, of um, word files are solved here. Um, it's a little bit different from slide based reports, but um, yeah, maybe helpful uh, in some kind. So we have various other options for reporting, but but that are the most commonly used ones. The web report, um, text reports, and um, the including of, of uh, post processors uh, like Animator for reporting.
station, you, you package it and you upload it uh, to the front end. There's a section where you can just manage as a key user these things. You can just um, you have a dialogue. You can upload your, your your report and it's instantly available in the, in the client. So uh, you're free to, to customize it at on your needs without um, interacting with us. Yeah. So that might be a first impression um, on our new um, client generation. So just remember that is one option to have it in the browser. Uh, the same functionality is available in the desktop client. And yeah, these we have both options here. That uh, was okay. uh, my part and uh, I'm Gordon is mm -hmm. showing it for, for a scale project. And let me finally show you the application scale project in our demo environment. OK, I have uh, started the web client. With the address here in my browser and I signed up. Uh, so usually you have no further dependencies uh, with the web client. In my in my case, this is a Linux system and a Firefox browser here that enables me access to to the tool and to scale project. Um, the first page, the starting page, is a list of all the projects uh, that you have some rights on that you are able to see by the permissions uh, system, yeah, where you have permissions on. And yeah, so you can see some, some uh, general information about the projects here in the list, such a small icon. Uh, to get a visual impression about the project and the category and the project name is shown here. You can see um, your own role within the project. Um, then actually like a, uh, only a sketch or mock-up, uh, um, the idea is to provide some additional information about uh, an overview of the actual project status in, in um, with something like a, a bar that, that shows the, the rating colors uh, in an aggregated form uh, of, the, of the project. And on the right side, you, you see uh, some information about the next upcoming um, milestone within the project. Yeah, that are the, the informations here. You can filter the list, uh, for instance, if you have many projects and you want to see one specific you can use a filter but there's an additional option to to mark the projects as your favorite and show them um, in a parallel list here in a more compact uh, list of all your favorite projects yeah that's the the project list there's one button on the right top to create some new projects but that is accessible only for uh, administrative colleagues with uh, related uh, permissions within the system that enables you to set up a new project uh, with a uh, related formula within the system. Yeah. Okay, if you decide to open one uh, project, you will start with such a project overview page with some uh, very general information about uh, the project, project name and description, and then you have uh, different uh, categories of uh, further information here. For instance, for the project documents uh, that enables you to provide central uh, documents for that project to all the project members. Um, in the second category, you see some attributes that enables you to describe the project in a very general and, and technical way. That means you can say, okay, which type of project that is, for which markets that project should be developed, and, and so on. That um, characterizes the project on the one hand, but on the other hand, it should also enable you to um, to filter out or to, to associate all the relevant requirements later in the project uh, configuration step. Yeah, if you know this is a, this um, project is relevant for a specific market, you can also decide which requirements has to be fulfilled for that project. That can be one use case of these uh, project attributes. 
In the third um, category here, you can see all the project milestones. Um, in a graphical representation here, you can see the actual date, you can see different timelines for different uh, purposes. For instance, for the main project, the, the master uh, milestones here, you can uh, see, you can configure different uh, timelines for departments or for components additionally. Uh, beside that graphical representation, you, you also have the possibility to, to open the list and, and see the um, milestone and timeline informations in detail here. Um, independence on your own role, you are able to edit these informations, for instance, to create some new timelines and uh, configure the, the milestones or, or move them around, or you can configure the attributes and add some new documents here. For the uh, uh, for a general project member, that uh, view will be presented in a read-only mode to only for information purposes here. Yeah? That depends on the uh, permission system or and that depends on your own permissions within the system. Okay. Um, that's the, the overview page. Let's take a look at the uh, main part here for the project requirements. I have a separate tab here for that. Um, let's collapse that. Um, you can see here um, the same table then in Kevit, uh, but the one line is not a test, a line is a requirement here. Yeah, you also have the same functionalities for sorting the informations, for filtering the informations to open such a view here to uh, enable or disable some columns and so on. Um, I want to show you the uh, one exemplary uh, requirement here. Let's take that firewall intrusion. Martin already mentioned in, in our uh, Kevit view. This requirement provides is provided for, for the other tools, as I already mentioned, to enable, for instance, some uh, rating within the reporting or directly within the Kevit grid uh, to, to, to show what is the, the state of a specific uh, test or simulation. And if we take a closer look on that um, object as uh, as a requirement, you can see here within the project uh, there is already something, uh, some uh, actual values available uh, that are shown in the color that is related to the threshold definitions for that requirement. And you see here the, the status informations in detail with some comments and also the user and the date is, is taken automatically by the system. And if you have some new uh, simulations or some new results from your development process, you can type in the, the new values here. Let's mark it as green. If I have a, another uh, information here, I can type it in and save that status and then the rating is updated and you see, okay, with the actual date and the user, uh, the documentation for the requirement actual status is done and during the time and over the whole development process of your project, uh, history is created here for all the things that has to be reported for that specific requirements and for all the requirements within the project. Yeah. Uh, I want to introduce uh, at least two more technical details here. Uh, the first one is a test result identifier for the requirement that enables uh, or that that gives us the the value that uh, uh, a simulation or a test will provide to automatically uh, give us this value. Yeah. This is an address on a specific test or simulation, uh, which uh, enables an auto automatically assignment. This is one component for that process. And the other component are these context attributes here, a list of attributes that describes the scope of that requirement. 
And if we have these informations on the one hand, and also some comparable or some identical informations on the other hand in our uh, simulation and uh, test environment, then you can automatically assign and identify simulations and tests that are able to contribute to that project status. Yeah, These informations are, are used or are needed for an automatically assignment of physical tests or simulation results to such a uh, project status. And this is uh, used in, in the status E itself, but also in Kevit for for color for automatically or at least uh, system supported uh, assessment of, of results. OK, that's uh, details here in the, in the side panel. And let's. Um, uh, Martin already mentioned the, the capability of the of the table to do some grouping. Uh, that's also possible here and also relevant uh, for for the requirements because if you imagine you have such a complex project like a car, you have not only what 30 or whatever requirements, you will have thousands of requirements and without any defined structure or filtering, you you will not be able to focus on the things that you are actually interested in. So for instance, here you can take some, at least the context attributes or also other informations in the table to, to define a structure that uh, depends on your needs. You, for instance, you can take something like a, a test case or load case, we call it load case here, or you can also take the department or the regulation here as grouping levels and you can play around here manually to uh, change the sequence of the grouping levels and for instance you can see here a much more um, accessible view of your requirements for instance you can see all the things that are related to the occupant safety department and to a specific regulation and to a load case too and then you have uh, a view with all the requirements that belongs exactly to that uh, topic and you can see the actual status of your uh, requirements related to that to that topic yeah um, yeah that's so far the the short introduction of uh, status e from my side i i will finish uh, with that and i think we have finished also our presentation at that point and mm -hmm. i think we have some time to to, to discuss some further questions from the group. Mm -hmm. Thank you yeah, very much yeah, for the attention.